This week's episode of AEW Dynamite here on TEW 2020 begins with Judas playing as Chris Jericho makes his way to the ring. Sammy Guevara isn't far behind on his crutches. When they both get to the ring, Jericho turns to Sammy. He nods and Sammy begins to make his way back at the ramp towards the commentary table where he puts on a headset. So he's going to be joining the commentary team ahead of this next match for Chris Jericho. Sammy Guevara saying at the same time, gentlemen, acknowledging Excalibur, JR and Tony Schiavone. And in this match, Jericho takes on the snot-nosed Joey Janela in singles competition. What a way to kick off this episode of Dynamite. In a bout that had great heat, good wrestling, Jericho defeats Janela in 12 minutes away by submission. It's a walls of Jericho, no Judas effect here, but the match scores a 75. That is probably one of the strongest starts we've had to a Dynamite. Then we roll into the commentary team after that match. It's Wednesday. You know what that means. AEW Dynamite is live and on the air for the first time ever on the All Elite Network. And what a show we have lined up for you this evening. Our last stop before Blood and Guts this Saturday. It's a stacked card tonight, JR, being the first time on the All Elite Network. Early today, it was announced by Tony Khan himself that all eight competitors in the Blood and Guts match this Saturday will be in action here tonight. So not only will we get the first ever meeting between CM Punk and Kenny Omega in our main event, but the world champion John Moxley challenges Brody King and the Good Brothers, who thought they were facing the Mount City Machine Guns tonight, will step in the ring against their old friends, the Young Bucks. What a wild night, and if that's not enough, Dr. Britt Baker teams up with Alison Kay as they take on the team of Shida and Riho. So, let's have a look at tonight's card. We're going to have the private party in action for the first time since joining forces with ACH and Will Hobbs. Hikaru, Shida and Riho team up. And how about this for a tag team match? The Young Bucks against the Good Brothers. The AEW World Champion John Moxley in action against the bad Brody King and what a main event Kenny Omega against CM Punk for the first time ever the private party of ACH Will Hobbs Isaiah Cassidy and Mark Quinn are set up in their private box ACH grabs a mic and says everyone in attendance tonight it's your lucky night not only are you in the presence of greatness, but tonight you get to witness my boys, Isaiah and Marquen, in action against a team that I have respect for, unlike the three Cowboys. No, these guys, they've been through it all, just like ourselves. They've scratched, they've clawed their way to be here. It's just unfortunate that the most machine guns now stand in our way. Go on then, Isaiah, Mark, go have some fun. So Isaiah, Cassidy and Marquez make their way down from the private pipe, private box surrounded by security. Once in the ring, the security continue to surround it just in case the three, that's Dax, Cash and Hangman Page, decide to show up. And we get just a 45 for this. Isaiah Cassidy poor when trying to improvise, although didn't really have much to say. And it's a good match as well. The private party picking up a win against the Mount City Machine Guns who lose for the first time here since arriving in AEW. A decent match, getting a 66, finishes in 10.30. Mark Quinn submitting Alex Shelley. And, uh, well, look at that. Not much in, in it, but Isaiah and Mark Quinn, the better performers than the, the veterans that are. Uh, Alex Shelley and Chris Sabin. That's an interesting one. After the match, both Isaiah and Mark Quinn look towards the private party, private box. ACH points at the most in machine guns. So Isaiah, Cassie and Mark Quinn attack Alex Shelley and Chris Sabin. It's a wild beatdown. Their attention then turns to Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler who run out from the back to make the save but private party quickly exit the ring and make a run for the private box surrounded by security. Dax and Cash just shake their heads and call for Private Pike to step in the ring. They can be heard shouting, Be men! Grow some balls! Pack is seen on the Tron. Dax, Cash, I think you forgot your boy. The camera turns to Hangman Page, hurting on the floor. Pack, Penta and Phoenix walk away. It's chaos for the World Tag Team Champions at the moment. 
They are just getting it from all areas at the moment, Dax and Cash. Ever since they won those tag team titles, they've still got the Lucha Brothers breathing heavily down the neck, and now they're having to deal with the private party. Renee, with me at this time, Cody Rhodes. Cody, the past couple of weeks, we've seen you get in the face of the TNT champion Miro. Let me stop you right there, Renee. What's happened over the past two weeks between myself and Miro isn't something I thought would be happening, and it seems he's willed this, whatever this is, into existence. Congratulations, Mira. You're, you're a TNT champion. It takes guts to leave one company, enter another, and become a champion. It shows dedication, but when you start aimlessly attacking members of our roster for no good reason, I have to step in. Will this inevitably lead to a match between myself and Miro? Probably, but only if Miro decides and Orange Cassidy strolls in who hasn't been seen for weeks after losing his TNT title. He lowers his sunglasses and says, if anyone deserves a shot at Miro next, it's me. Orange Cassidy walks off. Cody and Renee left unfounded. OC is back and he means business. Are we going to see a different side come out of Orange Cassidy over the next couple of weeks, leading towards maybe a TNT title shot? In a bout that didn't have much heat and terrible wrestling, Hikaru Shida and Riho defeated Dr. Britt Baker and Alison Kay in 9 minutes 3. Shida submitting Kay with a full metal muffler. So Dr. Britt Baker still kind of strong, still, well, she hasn't picked up a loss really. Yes, a loss in terms of tag team action, but not loss in singles action. So nothing to worry too much here. But Hikaru Shida continuing with her momentum. Shida... That got the uh, the submission. Rio seems genuinely happy for Shida. They both raise each other's hands, but then Rio looks at Shida, points at herself, and says, "I'm next in line. I will be the next women's champion." Then she exits the ring. Maybe a warning sent to Hikaru Shida. There's just so many that want in on Tony Storm's women's title at the moment. Then we move into. A promo by CM Punk. He's backstage with Brody King standing just behind him as he goes on to say, Tonight, for the first time ever, I step into the ring with Kenny Omega. The best in the world versus the best bout machine or the cleaner. It's a match for the ages, one that will capture the imagination. Let me tell you something though about Kenny Omega. A guy that's been running away from real challenges for years, that's been burying his head in the sand. He had the perfect opportunity to join that other company. He was handed a match against me at said company. You know what he did? He turned it down. He decided to stay in Japan where life is easy, it's comfortable. Sounds a bit like this place. See, he's in this world title eliminate tournament. Look who he has fought and who he will face. Jericho? The guy is past it. Darby Allen? He's a kid. Then Moxley, the biggest fraud in wrestling today. This is where the big boys play her. Huh? Reminds me a little of that other promotion that used to be here live on TNT on Monday nights. And we're not done here with CM Punk. It gets a 65, that first segment. This one's a little bit better as he continues. Franchise players, superstars, given big contracts for very little talent. The same thing is happening here. You watch. If or when Moxley loses his title, he'll split and he'll race back to Stanford with his tail tucked between his legs, wanting back in. Punk mimics Mox putting his fist out, a bit like the shield. No, tonight and Saturday, Kenny, you and your buddies are in for a wake up call, a culture shock, if you will. You step in the ring with real talent. Let's see how far you get, shall we? CM Punk walks off. If he had a mic in his hand, he'd be dropping it like a pipe bomb. Brody King slowly follows him. Maybe not too happy with uh, what CM Punk's just said. As Speaking of Culture Shock, the Good Brothers, Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson, the Young Bucks, Matt Jackson and Nick Jackson are in the ring and ready to do battle. But before the ref calls for the bell... Doc throws up the too sweet towards Matt and Nick. Matt turns back and looks at Nick on the apron. They both shrug and throw up the too sweet in the air also. The match begins. 
and I'm sure it's going to be a fantastic match, but signs are there between the Good Brothers and the Young Bucks, and it's oh, it's a fantastic match, isn't it? It's in a superb match, the Young Bucks defeat the Good Brothers in a show of maybe a bit of sportsmanship between old friends. After 16 minutes 54, it's Matt Jackson that pins Carl Anderson after a Meltzer driver with Nick Jackson. It gets an 82 this match. The Unites in letting things down, but I'm not too worried about that. Obviously, having Excalibur on commentary in real life would do the match justice, but unfortunately not here. Uh, but an 82, very strong showing for a tag team match. After the match, Doc and Carl Anderson stand in the middle of the ring with Matt and Nick Jackson looking at one another. After a moment, Santana and Ortiz of the Inner Circle slide into the ring, attacking both teams from behind. A baton is used by Santana, who is precise with it, taking out the big Doc Gallows first. Ortiz nails Matt across the back with the loaded sock. Anderson and Nick Jackson then team up together and fight back against Santana and Ortiz. Fists are flying until both Santana and Ortiz are clotheslined to the outside. Doc and Matt recover. All four stand united in the ring. It looks like Doc wanted to throw up a hand signal, but Carl taps him on the shoulder, just reminding him, you know, we're part of culture shock here. We can't show any sort of uh, friendship with the elite. Especially seeing as they take on the Elite this Saturday at Blood and Guts in that 4 on 4 steel cage, cage wars type match. And up next, Blood and Guts it is the uh, the promo for Blood and Guts this Saturday. Don't miss it, featuring the likes of Kenny Omega, John Moxley, and CM Punk. The bloodiest night on the AEW calendar. Thought I'd stick those three in there, maybe for a cheap pop, a cheap segment rating didn't really work out so we got 69 but our next match sees the AEW world champion John Moxley in action against Brody King continuing on with all eight competitors facing one another here tonight on this first episode of Dynamite on the All Elite Network and again we get another 82 segment rating it's another strong showing uh, from uh, well another main event worthy match after it John Moxley celebrates a big win over Brody King, heading into the Blood and Guts match this Saturday. Everything tipping in the favour of the elite team of Moxley, Omega and the Young Bucks. Whereas up next, we've got the big one, the main event. Kenny Omega, CM Punk for the first time ever. But before that, we see Hangman Page. He's seen, sat in the medical room, being seen to by Doc Sampson. Dax and Cash are with him, making sure he's okay. There is a knock at the door. They open it to find an errand guy. He passes on a message from the private party. On the note, it says, We're coming for those titles. And fuck Hangman. So as you'd imagine, that would get Hangman's back up straight away. It's going to annoy the tag team champions, Dax and Cash. They want to get their hands on the private party. They've done nothing but cause mischief. For the newly crowned tag team champions, I say newly crowned, they've been tag team champions now since uh, February. As we roll into our main event of the evening, it is an exceptional match. And it is Kenny Omega that defeats CM Punk in 21 minutes after a one-winged angel. No one kicks out of it. The match getting the crowd buzzing as it scores an 80s. Pay-per-view worthy this Dynamite. We've had two 82 rated matches followed up with the main event getting at 80. So we've got to be looking towards the 80s for that final show rating without a doubt. And it is the elite that go into blood and guts this Saturday with all the momentum on their side. Of course, Kenny Omega still in that world title eliminated tournament. Imagine what that's going to do for his momentum as he is set to take on Darby Allen for the first time. Well, after that main event, Kenny Omega has his arm raised by the referee. CM Punk is not happy, so attacks Kenny from behind. The ref is calling for the bell as a beatdown ensues. John Moxley runs out to make the save. He ties up with Punk. Brody King is down next. Shades of last week's tag team main event. Doc Gallows, Carl Anderson, the Good Brothers, and Matt and Nick Jackson, the Young Bucks, rush out. Good Brothers pull King and Punk away from the fight and the Young Bucks do the same with Omega and Moxley. These two teams torn 
with what is happening at the moment, it seems. Brody King breaks away and it breaks down again, just when it looked like the order has been restored. Referees and security try to break them all up, but to no avail, the locker room empties and this finally does the trick. Gallows and Anderson are caught shrugging at Nick and Matt. Omega and Mox are fired up as CM Punk is saying, See you Saturday. Darby Allen is seen once again, sat up in the rafters watching, waiting, presumably, for Kenny Omega. Dynamite comes to a chaotic end. So we've got that big match coming up between Darby Allen, Kenny Omega, um, after Blood and Guts in that World Title Eliminated Tournament, but we've got to focus on Blood and Guts first. That is coming up next. That is the next episode. It's going to be huge. Well, let's see what we've got then for that final show rating. Should be, I'm saying up towards the 80s, without a doubt, those three final matches. There we go. We're getting 80 for this episode of Dynamite. Really happy with that. Being the first Dynamite on the All Elite Network as well only going to help us in the long run especially over on the, uh, the in the British Isles we'll see that in just a moment when we compare with uh, with NXT's final rating but what a solid show we started off strong with Chris Jericho up against the snotty Joey Janela that tag team match was pretty decent also but those final three matches uh, the Young Bucks the Good Brothers Moxley against Brody King and that first ever main event between Kenny Omega and CM Punk absolutely fantastic we've knocked it out the park this week let's see if we've beaten NXT so we scored an 80 uh, we drew a 2.16 TV rating 1.6 million viewers tuned in over on the All Elite Network for the first time we had 283,000 viewers over on TNT that viewership a lot higher than previous weeks almost breaking into the million there so really happy we just need to make sure that we continue with this momentum off the back of blood and guts and i'm sure this week we have uh, blown nxt out the water got to have done with the show rate and they they'd have to do something really special uh in their show this week to to top that and that is really poor from nxt they've scored a 71 this week they achieved a 2.02 tv rating and they only had 1.5 million viewers tuning in. So for the first time in months, we've finally beaten NXT on viewership because of that All Elite Network that we've created to, uh, to try and rival NXT. It's simply because we lost the deal with ITV4, uh, but hopefully now we can get back on track and start beating NXT when it comes to viewership as well. Anyway, that is going to be it for AEW Dynamite. I will see you all very soon for AEW Blood and Guts. Don't miss it. But for now, thanks for watching.